Do you want to be more articulate? Do you want to be more eloquent? Being eloquent is nothing more than accurate communication. Being articulate is nothing more than being able to communicate your ideas, your thoughts, in a way that people understand exactly what you are trying to say. If you want to improve your communication skills, if you want to be more confident, more accurate, more eloquent, this is the video you need to watch. I'm going to share with you a cycle, a process, a system, a series of steps that you can follow in order to improve the way you communicate. So, not very well at the moment, to be honest. Um, I, every time that I had to participate in meetings or doing conversations, I get stuck, I freeze. I get lost for words. I cannot organize my thoughts or my ideas. I cannot articulate them. I feel stupid, to be honest. I wish I was a bit more articulate. I wish I was eloquent. And you know what? If I don't improve my communication skills, I'm gonna be stuck in this position forever. I'm not going to be able to grow. Do you think you have any advice for me? I do. Actually, there is something that I've been thinking about lately and I think it will help you big time. You know what? A lot of my clients have the same problem. A lot of people find it difficult to improvise or to find the right words when they are speaking or communicating during meetings. It's difficult for them to articulate their thoughts and their ideas. So after thinking about it, I came up with a cycle. I call it the becoming articulate, becoming eloquent cycle. I repeat, I call it the becoming articulate, becoming eloquent cycle. This cycle is made up of six steps that I promise you, if you get into the habit and you practice each step enough, communication will become easier and easier for you. The more you practice this, the better you'll become at improvising or communicating in any kind of situation. Let's go for a walk and let me tell you a bit more about it. Shall we? Excellent! I'm so excited about that. Let's go out and you can tell me more about the becoming eloquent, becoming articulate cycle, right? The cycle is the becoming articulate and eloquent cycle. It is made of six steps that you have to follow in the right order. Step number one, listen to yourself. I'll explain that later. Step number two, pay attention to the tone of your voice and your intonation. Number three, know yourself. Again, I'll explain that later. Number four, now it's time to start doing some work. You need to read and you need to start writing. Next one, step number five, is about working on your vocabulary and your grammar or your sentence articulation, your ideas and your thoughts articulation. And the last one, once you've covered the other five, is about practicing and improvising. The more you practice, the better you become at improvising. So those are the six steps. Let me go through them one more time. Number one, listen to yourself. Number two, pay attention to the tone of your voice and your intonation. Number three, get to know yourself. Who are you? Number four, start reading and writing. Number five, work on your vocabulary, your grammar, your thoughts, your ideas, articulation, organization. And number six, practice and improvise. Amazing, that's fantastic. Can you explain in a bit more detail what I have to do exactly on each one of those steps? 
because they sound great, yeah? Let me go through them in a bit more detail. Point one, two, and three are about getting to know yourself, understanding yourself, learning about yourself, identifying. And points four, five, and six are about taking action. Right, it's time to talk about step number one within the cycle. This one is perhaps the most important one, and maybe the most difficult. It is connected to the other ones. Listen to yourself. How do you do that? Well, you need to record yourself on video. You need to be able to see what other people see when you communicate. How do you feel when you see yourself on video or when you hear yourself talking? Probably you feel awkward, you feel a bit embarrassed. That's normal. It happens to all of us. But when you give yourself the chance to pay attention to the way you communicate, you will be able to identify all the mistakes and rectify. And you will be able to do so because your brain is not so busy thinking about what you have to say and how you have to say things. Looking at yourself on the screen or listening to yourself or watching, watching yourself on TV or on video will give you the opportunity to really pay attention. Now, what do you need to look for? There are a lot of things that you need to correct, probably, and maybe you don't know where to start. Don't worry, you can organize it in a simple way. You always need to correct the big mistakes, the general ones, and then little by little, you tackle the little ones. So, you have to make a plan and you have to prioritize the big mistakes. Around what criteria? Well, let's organize that in two big chunks. Let's just think about verbal communication. How is your verbal communication? And of course, the other one is your body language or non-verbal communication. In regard to verbal communication, you should be organizing or correcting the mistakes as well, from the most general ones to the specific ones. So let's think about your sentences. That is the most important thing that you need to address. Do you complete your sentences or do you always leave them halfway through? Do you jump from one sentence to another without finishing them or connecting them correctly? Think about as well, how do you connect ideas? Do you follow a story timeline or do you jump from one place to another? Finish your sentences. The other thing that you need to consider is slowing down. Because that way, you're going to give yourself time to think and organize your thoughts and articulate them better. So, that is the second one, slow down. And the third one is connected with sentences as well. And it's about pausing and using silence. You need to pause for emphasis before an important word or in between sentences or before important, actually before and after important information. That way you will allow people to understand that that information is important. What other things from the verbal communication point do you have to have into consideration? Of course, grammar and vocabulary, pronunciation and intonation. But I'm going to speak about those later on because they are part of the cycle. So that is step number one. Listen to yourself. Identify and rectify your mistakes. Oh, okay guys, let me see if I understand well. In order to correct the mistakes, I have to go from the big ones to the small ones, right? 
I have to go from the general to the specific and then make a plan, uh, prioritize, right? And I have to do that thinking about my verbal communication and my non-verbal communications, right? But there are probably many things that I won't be able to notice myself. Don't you think that maybe I'm gonna need some coaching or somebody to help me to identify those mistakes? Exactly, you got it right. You have to go from the general to the specific. And in regard to you being able to notice the mistakes, yes, having a coach is a great decision. So you could perhaps have somebody to help you maybe one hour a week. In fact, I think that we all should have a coach, a communication coach, at least see this person one hour per week. They can help you a lot. They can help you improve your communication from every single angle. But the points that we are going to talk about later like grammar, vocabulary, reading and listening, they will little by little help you, help you identify the mistakes. But having a coach, great idea. Genuine interest and curiosity. Showing genuine interest is not only about listening, but it's also about asking the right questions. In this scene, I move my hands a lot when I speak I got this tendency to gesture a lot, gesture with my hands a lot, so I need to control that. Step number two is about the tone of your voice and the accentuation, the intonation, it's all about pronunciation as well. It's not so much about what you say, but how you say it. What I'm trying to say with this is that sometimes the way you say things is more powerful than what you are actually saying. The way we say things can completely change the meaning. We express our emotions and our feelings through the changes in intonation. I'm sure you know about that, but can you control it? Are you conscious about your emotions and how things are coming out of your mouth? That is why understanding your emotions, your feelings, your personality, your attitude, your behavior is so important in communication because it's going to help you understand the way you communicate. So this is point number two and is very well connected with point number three. Know yourself. What are your beliefs? What is your attitude towards things? What is your personality? We know that feelings affect our emotions. Your personality conditions the way you feel and your feelings trigger emotions. So depending on your personality, the context and the situation, you may communicate in a way or the other. And you might not be fully aware of your emotions or your personality, and therefore you are not conscious of the way you communicate. So it is super important that you understand yourself. What kind of personality do you have? There are lots of books and documentaries and content out there that you can listen to or read. So I encourage you to read about personality traits or how to understand yourself or how to control your emotions or how to work on your attitude. This Books are going to help you a lot. So, hey, it's time to talk about steps four and five. These two have to go together. Step number four is about reading and writing. And step number five is about vocabulary and grammar. Step number five is also about using frameworks when you communicate. Reading is the best way to keep yourself informed and to acquire new vocabulary. At the same time, when you read, you are absorbing the grammar. You are learning about the organization of the ideas. So reading is very important. And if you read out loud, even better, because you practice your pronunciation and your intonation. So use reading to learn vocabulary, to learn sentence structure, and to learn how to organize the information. Make it a habit.
and then you have to write. When you write, whatever you have learned from reading, vocabulary and grammar, you can put it into practice. Write a lot, have a journal, write every day a few sentences in your journal, or make summaries of whatever content you are reading. Step number five, grammar and vocabulary. You need to acquire more vocabulary and you can do that through reading. You also need to improve your grammar and you can acquire that through reading and writing. So all you have to consider is to using a framework. Using the right grammar, the right vocabulary and the right framework I mean, the right organization of the blocks of information is going to help people understand exactly what you want to say. If you want to be clear, consider structuring the information from the most general points to the specifics. Don't start with the specifics. Make clear the big general points and then break them down into the specific ones. Using numbers is a great idea to classify the information or the different blocks of information. For example, today I want to talk about three key ideas. Number one, boom. Number two, bang. Number three, bang. That way people can retain and understand better what you are talking about. Numbers are easy to remember. And also try to organize the information in a logical way. There must be a connection between the ideas. If you organize the ideas, if you connect them in a logical way, they will be easier to understand. Also avoid repeating yourself. Do not over explain things. Consider using an introduction, a main body, and a conclusion. And within each part, you need to consider using topic sentences supported by supporting sentences. I mean, give a fact and give an example. That is the perfect way to communicate, to inform people. Give a fact and then give an example or tell a story. Remember, when you tell stories, you will have the chance to connect emotionally with people. People relate to stories and therefore they will understand you better. And finally, point number six, practice and improvise. For that, I'm going to make a separate video because there is a lot to say and there are a lot of things that have changed nowadays that we need to talk about in order to practice properly and improve communication. So for the moment, that's all I have to say. That is the six step cycle.